going to go live, you guys can keep talking, huh? Yeah, and since there are um, okay, we're live on 30 clips website. from the debate, yeah. we may skip a couple. Okay, so. that's fine. Everything's good on the daily wire, right? You finish that one. Just going to double check that. Actually, I'm not locked in. Oh. It's good to go on the daily wire, right? Yeah. Is there going to be any good Trump, bad Trump today? Um, should we do good yeah. Trump, bad Trump, just yeah. because? Just so Lindsay can see the theme song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll have to do that. Okay. We'll do it just because yeah. Lindsay's here. All right. We, there's not really a place for it. We'll just throw it out. all bad Trump? And no, he actually was, the, the debate was not bad Trump. The debate was, like, somewhat good Trump. The problem is that we are so late to the ball game with good Trump. Better late than never Trump? Better late than never Trump? No, actually, now it'd just be better never Trump. Yeah. Because this is, as we will explain. Don't worry, folks. <laughs> uh, ben, can you tell me what that first ad is? Uh, it is Bowl and Branch, Thank yes. Terrific. Okay. We'll start in just a second. And then we'll be Are ready. We, have you tweeted out the... Uh... I have tweeted out the link. Okay. Uh, you can see the teleprompter still? Everything's up there? I can. Okay. It is before mine very eyes. Good. <clears throat> okay. You ready to start? God. <laughs> Lindsay's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> she comes back, and I'm already annoyed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but are you ready to rock? Oh, wow. I am. I am prepared to rock right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. And three, two, one. So, it's the nightmare scenario. According to a new NBC Wall Street Journal poll, Donald Trump's is now collapsing. He's down 52% to 38% to Hillary Clinton in a two-way race. He is down 46% to 35% in a four-way race. In the generic congressional ballot, Democrats now outstrip Republicans by 49 to 42. Trump is not merely losing. He's dragging the entire GOP down with him, just in time to hand complete power to Hillary Clinton and her Democratic allies in the House of Senate. So well done, everyone. This is, happens. This is what happens when you nominate a combination of Todd Akin and Mark Foley to the presidency. In late August 2012, if you recall, Missouri Senator Todd Akin made comments about a local radio show on a local radio show about rape and abortion. The comments made him a national laughingstock. Republicans across the nation immediately cut ties. They sacrificed his Senate seat in an attempt to prevent the electoral infection from spreading. In the end, Republicans lost just two seats in the Senate and eight seats in the House. In September 2006, Representative Mark Foley of Florida was caught in a scandal involving sexual liaisons with congressional pages. Republicans again attempted to distance themselves, this time far too late. Republicans lost 30 seats in the House and control of the chamber to Nancy Pelosi and her radical Democrats. Now, Imagine if Todd Akin or Mark Foley had been running for president. And imagine if the Republicans had then insisted on tying themselves to those candidates. That's right now. Donald Trump knows this election is over. Everybody knows this election is over, except for a few demented people over at Breitbart News. But they're clinging to an alternative reality anyway. Sorry to be depressing, folks. This is the truth. It's a reality in which Trump could still win, but only if everybody stays loyal to him and talks about how great he is. Trump's debate performance gives him just enough credibility that Republicans will stay in line. He tossed red meat at Republicans, and they're eating it up. Republican officials who continue to defect will be punished by people who think they're defecting because they're too weak need to attack Hillary Clinton. That's why Paul Ryan got booed after refusing to invite Donald Trump to an event on Saturday, the day after news of the blank tape broke, the, the P-word tape broke. Here's Robert Cost of the Washington Post reporting just that, quote, in calls this morning, many Republicans privately want to defect from Trump, but they say the debate gave them pause since he roused their base. So, the hemorrhaging of Republicans away from Trump has stopped for the moment, even if some like Speaker of the House Paul Ryan are gradually attempting to edge away quietly like Homer Simpson into a bush. In theory, that's fine. In practice, it's going to be the equivalent of a Viking funeral. The Viking dies, the community insists his widow climb on the funeral pyre with him. Trump's pride demands that if his candidacy is dead, everyone shall burn with him like the heathen kings of old. And burn they shall. Trump informed his voters on Sunday that anyone who wouldn't support him should be punished at the polls, raising the ugly specter of people voting for Trump at the top of the ballot and then leaving the rest of the ballot blank. So Trump's going to go down, he's going to take the rest down with him, and he's going to laugh while doing so. Here's what Robert Costa tweeted, quote, Trump circle gloating, privately mocking elected Republicans who are agonizing. One laughed and said, we don't care. Here's the thing. 
Trump isn't a Republican. He's not a conservative. He probably doesn't think things will be that bad if Hillary and the Democrats are elected, which is why he gave money to them for 30 years. That's the sick joke of this election cycle. His supporters think it's the end of the world if Hillary and the Democrats take over, and they're pretty much close to right. But Trump is perfectly happy to watch Republicans and conservatives go down in fiery ruin just so he can feel good about the size of his hands. And Hillary knows it. For months, she's tried to separate Trump off from normal Republicans. She thought she could draw Republicans to her side if she created an option to escape Trump. Now that she knows she's going to win big, she's going in for the kill. She's linking all Republicans to Trump, hoping to win the House. Here's what she just tweeted this morning. Quote, Ryan is still endorsing Trump. She's trying to tie them together. This is a full-scale disaster. Hillary's looking to exploit it. And Republicans are too short-sighted to stop it. But it's not just about losing the presidency and losing the Senate and losing the House. Trump has done something else, too. By forcing Republicans to lash themselves to the Trumpian Titanic as it takes on water, he's forced them to destroy their own arguments and their own cause. Republicans have spent decades fighting the leftist false narrative of a broad American war on women. And now they're spending all their time writing off talk of sexual assault as locker room talk. Republicans have spent decades telling voters character matters. And then when their candidate brags about attempting to F married women, they shrug it off by citing King David because apparently they don't know the Bible all that well. Republicans have said they're not racist and neither is America, which is true. And then they brush off the guy who went easy on the KKK and used textbook racism, in the words of Paul Ryan, against a judge of Mexican descent. They're giving Democrats all the fodder they'll need for decades more of crap and false arguments about the evils of Republicans and the American people. Now, let's be clear. None of this means Republicans can't vote for Trump. You can, and maybe you should. As I've said thousands of times at this point, it's possible to condemn in the strongest terms all of Trump's evils and still make a lesser of two evils choice. A lot of my friends are doing that. But many Republican leaders aren't capable of the cognitive dissonance. So instead, they make excuses for Trump and they make light of his disgusting rhetoric and action and they lose women and they lose minorities and they lose an entire generation of young voters in the process, not to mention their souls. The Trump advocates wanted to see everything burn. They're going to get their wish. But Hillary's going to be the one holding the mash and match and she's going to be laughing hysterically while Donald sits off to the side, securing the knowledge that at least he demonstrated just what a tough guy he is. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. Okay, sorry for the depressing lead there, folks, but I just decided I would would get the the ugly stuff out of the way. So we'll talk about the debate last night, which went better for Trump than was expected. Of course, the expectations were that he would spontaneously combust, burst into a ball of flame, hurl himself on Hillary Clinton, and then they would both burn down to cinder. But since that didn't happen, he won. So we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about, you know, the the fallout from that, the fallout for the Republican Party, because there's just a lot happened over the weekend. We did a Friday show, but it was too early in the day, so we missed all of the Trump... um, Vagina talk, uh, and so we will. We'll, we'll get into all of that. But first, but first, uh, we have to say hello to our advertisers over at Bowl and Branch. It's B O L L and Branch, and they make sheets, and they make the greatest sheets in the world. These sheets are truly astoundingly good. Uh, we we got them, and uh, we have them on our bed. And I am very very picky about the sheets that I sleep on because I tend to uh, heat up a lot when I sleep at night. Bowl and Branch sheets—they breathe. They're really comfortable. They're really nice. Uh, they're good-looking sheets. I mean, it's, it's, they, they really make terrific product. Luxury sheets can cost up to $1,000 in the store, but Bull & Brand sheets are only a couple of hundred bucks. So you get them for a good price. And if you think, oh, well, that sounds expensive for a, for a set of sheets, remember, you're sleeping on these things every night, and they really do affect the quality of your sleep. They definitely affect the quality of my sleep. Uh, they have thousands of five-star reviews, uh, and uh, I, I believe there are, are three former presidents who have slept on them, which means that three former presidents and not Hillary Clinton have slept on them, because Bill and Hillary have never actually shared a pair of sheets. Uh, or if they did, it was many, many years ago, one time, and that's how Chelsea was born. In any case, Bowen Branch are the sheets, and uh, and they are fantastic. If you if you go to their website right now, bullandbranch.com, bullandbranch.com, B-O-L-L and branch.com, use the promo code Ben, 50 bucks off your first set of sheets. So instead of a couple hundred, it's now 150. So that's pretty awesome. And by the way, you can try them for 30 nights, and if you don't like them, then you can return them. So you can even see if it's something that you like. Shipping is free, and uh, and I promise you, like as somebody who knows nothing about sheets except the quality of the ones that I sleep on, I, got, I can tell you that I've slept on them. They're a fantastic product. Bull and branch.com, promo code Ben. Okay, okay. So since we last saw one another, lots of things happened. Lots of things happened, people. And not all of these things were good. And most, most of these things were very, very bad for the Republican Party. So we take our story back to last Friday. We begin last Friday. I finish the show. I say Donald Trump has a shot at restoring some momentum to his campaign. Mike Pence has stopped the slide in the VP debate. And Donald Trump finally has a shot to get back on track. And then this tape comes out. So the Washington Post breaks this tape. Uh, it's, it's a tape of uh, Billy Bush. Uh, the only Bush who mattered in this election cycle turns out to have been Billy. Uh, and Billy Bush 
is on the bus with Donald Trump, and they're talking about sex and such. And um, and here is Donald Trump being Donald Trump. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the. <laughs> I can do anything. And Billy Bush giving the fake awkward laugh because he knows that Donald Trump's a celebrity and he's supposed to treat him nicely. Okay, so Billy Bush, by the way, has basically been fired over this. Donald Trump uh, is, says that, and this, of course, goes viral because tape is everything in, in the modern society. So, look, n- number one, if you didn't know that this is who, who was who Trump was, I don't know what you've been watching for the last year. I don't know what you've been reading about him for the last year. I, I, honest to goodness. I mean, like, this is who Trump is, and he's always said this kind of stuff. I mean, in the same tape, he brags about trying to F a married woman, uh, and uh, that's been completely overlooked because of this particular comment. And, and Trump, of course, says that this is just locker room talk. So I want to break this down for a second, okay? Yes, it turns out that men talk dirty about women a lot. It turns out that we think women are sexual creatures, and we say things about their body parts, and welcome to the real world. By the way, I'm under the impression, according to Sex in the City, women do the same thing about men. So the idea that, that men and women don't talk about each other sexually is just silly talk. That said, there's actual bad stuff on this tape, okay? When you talk about wanting to F married women, I don't want to hear any more about how Donald Trump has repented and he's just like King David and he's just like Abraham and he's just like all the all of the, the founders of religion, that he's, he's you know an adulterous cretin who's never apologized for anything and brags about having sex with married women, but he's just like all of the great men in the Bible. Now, Shut up. Okay, it's stupid. It's illiterate. You're a moron. Okay, it's not, it's not true. Second thing, when he says, so people brush stuff. It's just talk. Okay, it's just talk. When he says, I just go up to women and I just kiss them and they don't do anything about it because I'm famous, that is called sexual assault. It is. I'm sorry. As someone who respects women, as someone who has a wife and three, do- and, and three sisters and a daughter and a mother, as somebody who actually believes that women are to be treasured in terms of how you behave toward them, as someone who has never, ever attempted to uh, walk up to a woman and just kiss her, right? I mean, like, my wife, maybe, right? <laughs> but the, but the, the idea that I would just walk up to a random woman and just kiss her because she's not going to do anything about it, I'm pointing out a couple things about this. Number one, it is sexual assault. Number two, when he says, grab her by the bleep, I don't know if he's exaggerating for the purpose of the laugh or if he really has attempted to do that, but... He really has attempted to kiss women without their permission, and he just does it randomly. I mean, the New York Times reported this back in May. Uh, They said that he used to go in the Miss Universe dressing rooms and just walk up to women and kiss them on the lips uh, without any sort of forewarning, without even knowing them, just walk up to them. And the the reason that Billy Bush is laughing, by the way, is not because Billy Bush is a uniquely bad guy. It's because everyone in Hollywood acts like this is okay. Everyone in Hollywood acts like this. As somebody who lives in L.A., grew up in L.A., knows a lot of Hollywood people— when you say, when, when Hollywood and the media and the Democrats complain about Trump doing this, let's just be clear. Hollywood and the media and the Democrats all do this, okay? NBC knew he did all this crap for 20 years, and they put him on The Apprentice and left him there and talked him up as a great God King genius. I mean, this tape was lying around the, the archives at Access Hollywood, and nobody bothered to turn that over to management? I mean, like, because this is common, because in Hollywood, this sort of thing is common. Now, that said, it is not justifiable, and it cannot be justified, okay? When you say that you sexually assault women, that can't be that can't be justified. Now here is the problem. You can say, you still can say, I'll vote for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. You can. You can still say that, right? But if you say if you say that, you should also say some of the stuff that he's saying is bad. It's bad to say these things. It's bad to do these things. Right? Instead, because people can't handle the cognitive dissonance at all, instead what they do is they pretend it's okay. Ah, it's just locker room banter. Oh, it's just dirty talk. What's the big deal? Why is this a big deal? Understand, when you do that, you're handing the Democrats every single thing they want in life. All they want in life is for you to write off, talk about sexual assault as no big deal, while they're still trying to claim there's a culture of rape and a war on women. That's all they want politically. That's all they want. And so Trump is dragging down the party with him. So this tape comes out, and a bunch of Republicans do what always happens when something like this comes out. They run for the hills, right? When Todd Akin made comments that I mentioned before about abortion and rape back in 2012, everybody ran for the hills. Here's a list of Republicans who immediately— who, well, here are the ones who never endorsed or supported him but called on him to step down. Hugh Hewitt, who's been a big Trump booster. Barbara Comstock from Virginia. These are all senators and representatives. Charlie Dent from Pennsylvania. Jeff Flake from Arizona. Will Hurd, Texas. John Kasich, Ohio. John Catco, New York. Steve Knight, California. Mike Lee, Utah. Representative Mia Love, Utah. Governor Susanna Martinez, New Mexico. Senator Lisa Murkowski, Alaska. Governor Brian Sandoval, Nevada. Representative Fred Upton, Michigan. 
Here are the ones who rescinded their endorsements. Okay, those are the ones who hadn't endorsed ever. Here are the ones who rescinded. Senator Kelly Ayotte, New Hampshire. Governor Robert Bentley, Alabama. Representative Bradley Byrne, Alabama. Senator Shelley Moore Capito, West Virginia. Representative Jason Chase Fitz of Utah. Mike Crapo, Senator from Idaho. Governor Dennis Dalgard of South Dakota. Representative Rodney Davis, Illinois. Senator Deb Fisher of, of Nebraska. Representative Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska. Corey Gardner of Colorado. Scott Garrett, New Jersey. Gary Herbert, Utah. I mean, it's, it's, this list goes on and on. McCain. Senator Rob Portman. John Thune. I mean, the, the list is endless. Okay, so so a lot of people just decide, okay, we're out, and the reason we're out is because we're not going to burn with you. Okay, you're going to go down in flames, and we're not going to do it. We're not burning with you. We're not burning with you. We're not going to do this. Okay, so what that formed up into over the weekend was a lot of people saying that Trump should drop out. One of the people saying Trump should drop out is Senator Mike Lee, who never endorsed Trump in the first place and is one of the few honest people left in the United States Congress. I really like Mike Lee, like personally and also as a politician. Here's the senator from Utah. Now, there is a way here for Mr. Trump to have a legacy in this election cycle and for his supporters who are, are, are really energy, who have done uh, a whole lot of good as far as expanding the party to have a lasting legacy that could mean something here. And that is for Donald Trump to step aside and for the Republican Party to find a candidate who can bring together all the elements within the Republican Party and defeat Hillary Clinton in November. That's what we want to do. That's what we need to do now. Okay, so he says that, that we need to get rid of Donald Trump. Now, we'll talk about Trump's reaction, and we'll talk about all the rest of this, the debate, in just a second. I want to make a quick note, and then, and then I have to take a break really quickly for, for another ad. But here's, here's the quick note. Okay, folks, I know this isn't pleasant to talk about. You think that I'm sitting here chortling over this? This is horrifying. Okay, it's horrible. And I wish that none of this mattered. I wish that Donald Trump could say stuff like this, and, you know, it wouldn't make any difference. First of all, I don't wish he could say stuff like this. I don't think anyone should say stuff like this, because I don't. I'm, I, I believe I'm a gentleman, and I think that that matters to people. And all these people who think that be, it's being a pansy to be nice to women and not say nasty thing about women, I would just recommend they check their morals handbook again. But I wish that we lived in a world where these weren't the candidates. I wish that Donald Trump were a better candidate. I wish that Republicans weren't blowing this. I wish that the polls didn't show what the polls show. If you come, to, if you come here, I'm going to tell you, that I'm not going to give you happy talk about what's going to happen in this election. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. If you want to hear what you want to hear, there are plenty of other places you can get it. If you want to hear this morning only about how Donald Trump is still going to win this election and things are going to be grand and glorious and he's going to appoint the ghost of Justice Scalia to the bench and, and the Republicans are going to win 80 seats in the Senate, if you want to hear all that crap, there are plenty of places you can go and those places will also tell you that people like me own it when things go bad. You know, you could, There are plenty of places for you to go for the happy talk. You're not going to get the happy talk here. I'm going to tell you what is true. I'm going to tell you what is true. And if you don't like it, well, tough. Because the fact is that my job is not to lie to you. And honestly, I don't think that it's worthwhile that any... I think the reason we got here is people lying to you. I think the reason that we got here is that there are a lot of people, Trump supporters included, who were lied to all through the primaries and all the way up to now, who were told that Donald Trump was not only a good conservative, but were also told that not only would he be the only one who could fight, but he would be the only one capable of winning, and that when he fought, he would win. That's what they were told. And, and I, I don't think that was true at the time, and I don't think it's true now. And I'm telling you the poll numbers because numbers matter. And I want to hear about stupid online polls from Matt Drudge about 97% versus 3. I love the Drudge Report, too. But online polls don't mean anything. I'm going to give you the poll results, and I'm going to tell you there's now a serious danger that Republicans lose everything to Hillary Clinton so long as they lash themselves to the mast of this Titanic. If you lash yourself, I mean, Donald Trump is now in the midst of an electrical, a raging electrical fire. All that happened in that debate last night is that he gave cover to people who still want to stick with him on the Republican political side, or at least he pressured people to stick with him on the Republican political side. But the polls show that he is still in the middle of a raging electrical fire. Now, if you want to vote for him, you can still vote for him. As I've said before, I understand. I get it. I don't think you're morally lesser for voting for Donald Trump if you think that he's worse, if you think he's better than Hillary Clinton. Go for it. I understand that. Lesser of two evils logic is still compelling logic. It still applies. That said, I'm not going to lie to you about what's going to happen. I'm not going to pretend your vote is going to be the difference between Donald Trump winning and Donald Trump losing. I'm telling you, the only thing that's going to make a difference now, the only thing that's going to make a difference is don't defend stupid, nasty things that people do and say. Don't defend evil things that people do and say. Stand up for principle, no matter who you're voting for, and then vote down ticket. Because I promise you, things are not going to be ugly. They're going to be horrendous if Hillary Clinton is elected and if 
if there's no Republican Congress to stop here. Okay, that said, I want to say hello to our advertisers over at Birch Gold. So Birch Gold Group, if you're looking, if you're worried about the future of the country, and I certainly am, you may want to look into investing in precious metals. Birch Gold Group are the people who I would trust to do that. They have a long-standing track record of great success, thousands of satisfied clients, countless five-star reviews, an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They have a 16-page kit that reveals how gold and silver can protect your savings and also how you can move your money from 401k uh, or stock option and, and, and the stock market into, into the precious metals IRA. To get that kit, you can call Birch Gold Group at 800-496-6663. It's 800-496-6663. And as I say, as I'm fond of saying, you know, make sure that you ask all your questions before you make any investment decisions. Make sure you research everything down to the ground. And then if you want to buy precious metals, then talk to my friends over at Birch Gold Group. It's birchgold.com slash Ben. Make sure you use the slash Ben, birchgold.com slash Ben. And that's how they'll know that we sent you, and they will continue to advertise with us. And that will uh, allow us to continue functioning after we end up offshore broadcasting because this election is horrifying. Okay, so a final quick note before we have to take our break. Okay, so all of this happens, you know, the, Mike Lee said, everybody said, a lot of people say drop out. People who are big Trump backers say drop out. They're realizing that the writing is on the wall and all the rest. And, um, and at this point, Trump says, I'll never drop out. Trump says, I'll never drop it. So he tweets this. The media and establishment want me to dr- want me out of the race so badly. I will never drop out of the race. will never let my supporters down. Hashtag MAGA. Okay, let me explain something, folks. You're all going to be let down. You're all going to be let down because he's going to get crushed. Sorry to break it to you. I, don't, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings. He is going to lose. And he's not going to lose in, in, in small fashion. He's going to lose spectacularly. We're talking about McGovern-type numbers. We're talking about, we're talking about Walter Mondale-type numbers. Okay, it's going to be very, very, very ugly. And the worst part is he's now going to drag other people down with him because here's, what, here's the other thing that he tweeted. Quote, so many self-righteous hypocrites watch their poll numbers and elections go down. I remember, I'm old enough to remember when Donald Trump said we all had to vote for Donald Trump because he was going to save the Supreme Court. Let's say that Trump were by some miracle to get elected. Let's say that he were to win for some reason. Okay, something were to happen, and it were to come out that Hillary Clinton once had sex with a Russian horse or something, and, and it came out in, in the emails released by the Russians. Let's say all that happened, and Donald Trump ends up in office. But he doesn't have a Republican Senate. He doesn't even have close to a Republican Senate. You going to get that Supreme Court judge? You going to get that wall? You're not going to get any of those things. Trump doesn't care. Trump never cared. This is all about his ego. It was always all about his ego. Today, Paul Ryan said, I'm not going to campaign for Trump. I'm not going to defend Trump. I'll still vote for him, but I'm not going to campaign or defend Trump because I'm not going to get burned and burn all the members of the House having to defend all of Trump's horrible statements that are going to come out. By the way, if you think that the only shoe to drop is this P-word video, get ready, gang. Get ready. It's going to be 12 days of Christmas for the media because this is just there's going to be a gift every single day. And I'll tell you what the next gifts are going to be in just a minute because it was perfectly set up last night and Trump fell right into it. Okay. Trump's response to Paul Ryan was Speaker Ryan should go back to being crappy at his job, basically. This is, real, this is really what he tweeted, okay? This is the guy running for, for president on the Republican ticket. Quote, Paul Ryan should spend more time on balancing the budget, jobs, and illegal immigration, and not waste his time on fighting Republican nominee. That's what Trump is tweeting out at, the, at his own Speaker of the House. Yeah, clearly this is a guy who cares deeply about what happens to the Republican Party. He doesn't care about the Republican Party. He has no interest in, in what happens here. And we'll talk about something that next. We'll talk about something Kellyanne Conway did that's even worse than what Trump did, which is amazing because I like Kellyanne Conway. But first, we have, to, we have to take our break. If you're on Facebook, you'll be cast into the outer darkness, as Andrew Clavin likes to say. Dailywire.com if you want to subscribe. Eight bucks a month, and you can see the rest of this live. In the last month of the cycle, this is when you're going to want to be part of the dailywire.com. You want to join the mailbag. On Thursdays, we have the mailbag. Yeah, Lindsay's here, by the way. That's why I forgot to mention that. Lindsay is sitting right here here, being her wonderful self, and uh, and shouting woohoo at random odd intervals. So, <laughs> dailywire.com is the place to subscribe. Eight bucks a month, you get my show, you get Clavin's show, and you get all sorts of goodies that are coming soon, I promise. There are, there are goodies coming. Uh, and uh, and so go there to uh, to become part of the, the largest conservative podcast in the nation. 